I'm not a tree. I haven't got roots. It's not about being brave. Uh, it's about surviving. I am a solo one lifer. And I think me jumping out with an ax in my hand, I think they're soon gonna run away, aren't they? <laughs> this is my back garden, guys. Home is where you park it. Just, and it is as simple as that. A shower and a toilet is, is the most common question. Yeah, where do you go to the toilet and, and where do you get showered? The answers. Hi guys, welcome back to Liberation. Thanks for tuning in to another video. Today we are in the Peak District talking to Vicky, who is a solo female van lifer. Hope you enjoy the video and back to it. My name's Vicky. I'm a full-time van lifer. I've been van lifing for just over a year now. The van is a transit long wheelbase. She's a 2.4 litre, 19 year old, but she's only just done 62,000 miles. Before I was a van lifer, I've run a couple of companies. I've been a director, care manager of care agency. Um, I've run my own um, driver hire company. Been the wife with the house and the car and, and the, uh, the, the stepdaughter. It just didn't work. That life wasn't for me. I was chasing something that wasn't going to make me happy. All the homes that I've lived in, I've never felt like it's a home, ever. It, and I've never felt safe. And van life, it's, it's something that I've always like looked at, it's something I've always been interested in, to the point of having notebooks that are laying my own design out and things went Pete Tong uh, with my relationship, um, trauma-based, and I realised that I just couldn't manage to run a house anymore at all anyway. So that's what I did. Sold everything, got rid of everything in the property, gave up my rent, my mum helped me buy my little van, and did it out and off we went. And there we are today, 13 months later. The amount of times that I've had people comment on my Facebook and things like that saying, you're so brave. And it's not about being brave, uh, it's about surviving. It, it's really hard to explain because obviously you can, I could get broken into this the same as I can get broken into a house, even though it's a transit and it can be gone just like that. <laughs> With a lollipop stick, apparently, according to Jeremy Clarkson. But I don't know, I feel safer. I just feel safer. And say 90% of the time, you're parked up near other people, there's a property nearby, there's police patrols. But she can hear a lot, obviously. She can hear everything as well. Well, when I was thinking about doing it, it was the freedom, freedom to be able to move because I can't handle being parked up, par or stationary. I can't deal with it. You give me a few days and I really, really start to pace. My brain starts to get dark and heavy and I'm not a tree. I haven't got roots, you know, I, I, I can't deal with it. So yeah, it was like, okay, so what do I do? Do I go for a van? Do I go for a canal boat? But as it stands at the moment, whilst I'm still quite youngish, um, definitely wheels, definitely wheels, 100%. You know, you can just wake up in the morning and think, I'm gonna go to Scotland. Come on, let's go to Scotland and off we go. Okay, so this is the flat. Named the flat due to the fact that I've moved up from a short wheelbase, which was the bed sit. As you can see, I like my stickers. A couple of new ones from the van meet last weekend or the weekend before. Sliding window near the cooker. So when I'm cooking, obviously that gives it some, uh, some fresh air. I obviously have my LPG sticker to let people know uh, following me that I'm carrying gas. Storage in the back, so I have all my separate clothes in all different plastic containers. My bed's up, raised up there. I can just lay in the bed, watch the sunset. Um, I do have a curtain there as well, just to keep everything nice and warm. So that's uh, <clears throat> my back doors. <laughs> <laughs> Like my stickers on this side, obviously I've got built, not bought, because it's not a motorhome, I didn't buy it like it, I built it. Spotlights on the side there, security lights, solar panelled security lights, so on a night time they basically light anybody up that comes down this side of the vehicle. My solar panel at the moment is literally laid there. It, it belongs on the roof, <laughs> but getting up onto the roof and getting it glued on the roof is quite challenging at the moment. Um, so that's why it's, uh, it's laid on the floor. 
Window screen cover is absolutely perfect for privacy. Um, it also keeps the heat in and keeps the sun out. This is my back garden, guys. So I can literally wake up in the morning, open my side door with a coffee and I get to look at that rather than other people's houses and windows. When you live in the van, anywhere is your back garden. Wherever you park it, that's your garden. That's, that's, that's where you are for where, however you long you're there. Home is where you park it. Just, and it is as simple as that. At the moment, I'm kind of classing myself as a bit of a wanderer. I'm, I'm on disability. I'm unable to work at the moment. Um, so I'm on disability and I'm, unfortunately I'm on universal credit. But I am hoping and I'm working towards going back to work. Uh, but at the moment, the way things stand and the healing process, I am literally just wondering and healing and learning and, and getting out and meeting new people and learning how to socialise again. So it is my, I suppose my kind of lifestyle at the moment is very, very relaxed and, and free. Learning that I can just be rather than what I was, what's been expected of me um, this past 20 years, like it's probably a very relaxed lifestyle. Some people would probably, I think there's a lot of people do look at me and go, ah, How are you affording to do that on the government money? Rah, 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 rah. You just don't know how broken my brain is. You know, I can't, I want to go back to work, um, but at the moment I'm still learning to, to look after myself first before I can do that. So, yeah, very relaxed lifestyle. It is definitely a slower pace of life and I, it, it makes you slow down and, and appreciate things more. Um, because I've grown up in a city and that was too much. So I've come out to, to nature. This is why I'm here. I've come this way to get away from that. The noise pollution, the, the light pollution and the people. Where you're parked is definitely a massive thing. I mean, I park sometimes in Cleethorpes. And it's all well and good from about 10 o'clock until about six in the morning. And then after that, it's you get me out of here. You're surrounded by people, hustle, puzzle. So this be, being how, out in this kind of environment or with it near a quiet beach is a, a must, 100%. It's, it opens your eyes to what else there is out there. Because when you live in the lifestyle of a nine to five job, and all the chores, your head's down and you're busy, 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 busy. You're doing, doing, you've got to, got to, got to. When you get into this lifestyle, you haven't got to. You are slowing down and then you, you're appreciating what's around you more. And the more you look, the more it opens your eyes and you think, fucking hell, all these years I've, I've run around with my head touching the floor and there's this out there. You, you find yourself litter picking because you're like, what are these people doing? You know, this is such a beautiful place to sit and just sit and be, and people are just tossing the rubbish all over the place. How can you drive away from that? Because that person that's just driving past as you pull out are gonna see all that and pin that to you straight away. We can't do that. We can't do that, and that's why we litter pick. Having a dog for me is, uh, it gets you out there and it gets people coming to talk to you as well. She's good security, uh, she's fantastic security. Finding somewhere to park can be challenging. The way I see it is we are taxed, we're insured. We can literally park on a street if, if that comes to that. I think people come to, the, come to van life and they watch it on Instagram and they watch these people that have had the 65 and the 75 grand and they've been able to buy the big swanky van and, and make things absolutely fantastic. That is not how it works, mate. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how it works. It does come with its challenges, but it doesn't come with anywhere near as many challenges as having a house does. I've got three bills. Car tax, car insurance, and my mobile phone. That's it. The, the issues that you do come again, up against are just, they, they're like, they're just little mini skills because that is the only thing you've got to worry about. So my setup, got quite a long separate seating area which also doubles for a very small single bed as well which is which is handy my diesel heater is under here and the rest of it from the rest of the sofa is storage so we've got it's not plumbed in at the moment it's still not finished but I do have a pipe run into a bottle so out underneath there I've got a 10 litre waste bottle my water is all in separate bottles as well because like I say we're not plumbed up 
I don't need it. I'm happy with picking a bottle of water up. It's not an issue. So the rest of this is storage, pots and pans. This is all my food and all my bits and bobs in there. My hob um, is obviously a gas hob. Do you know how I got a bargain with that? Somebody had took it to a charity shop and I got it for 40 quid. Now brand new, still in the box. I don't warrant having an oven, so I didn't bother. But what I've got is what we call an omni oven and it goes on the hob. And that's perfect for, for doing the bits and bobs that I do like to cook in an oven, i.e. the half-baked bread buns and, and things like that. I love the indie feel, like the, the boho kind of kind of feel. But yeah, I've gone for the, the woody feel for, for warmth, really, for cosy. And I think with this, you can get a feel of who I am as a person, as well as it being homely. I had to be quite specific with my bed. I've come from a short wheelbase. So it's king size width, so it's five foot um, from here to the back doors, but it's only five foot eight that way. So I have to sleep corner to corner. It's, it's raised, so there's no bars, there's no legs or anything to fight round. It is literally uh, metal strips, three metal strips. So under my bed, I've got my gas bottle just there. You can just see that. And then I've got plastic drawers lining that wall and plastic drawers lining the back wall. Uh, that's got all my clothes. I have all my, my girly stuff, uh, my makeup and my perfumes and, and everything in my cupboard. And then that one there is just the same, just more storage. I've got so much storage left, but what do you, what do you need? You know, I've got everything, literally everything I need here, so. My axe is actually uh, made by a friend. My new friend has actually made that and given that to me. It's obviously for doing wood and stuff, because uh, we always have a fire. Oh, we've got to have a fire on a night time. Not allowed round here, but uh, when we do meets, we have to have a fire. It's also a protection tool. I am a solo one lifer and I think me jumping out with an axe in my hand, I think they're soon going to run away, aren't they? <laughs> Over the bed there I've got a couple of uh, 12 volt sockets for charging my phone and my TVs. little blue light there just tells me what power I've got in my batteries. I have a spotlight over the bed and the lights that are all wrapped around the rope are all solar powered on a night that these are all lit up. When you shut the doors and you've got the curtains shut and the, and the candles go in, you forget that you're even in the van. Yeah, it's bliss. It is, it's bliss. When you park right, you do get the moon and you can lay and watch the moon and the stars and everything. Oh, it's perfect. And then the draft as well. If you have it open a little bit and you feel the draft in the night, oh, it's, it's epic. A shower and a toilet is, is the most common question. Yeah, where do you go to the toilet and, and where do you get showered? Um, the answers, I use a cat litter tray. Um, because you can just bag it and put it in a bin. You don't have to worry about using the liquids for this and the liquids for that, and then you haven't got to worry about finding somewhere to empty it, all the rest of it. Cat litter tray, bish bash bosh, all done straight in the bin. And as for a shower, leisure centres, two pound, two pound fifty max. Uh, services on the motorway, friends, family, and when it gets a little bit warmer, a bucket. There's ways and means. Negatives and positives, okay, um, most negative of this lifestyle would be... Ooh, yeah. The positive, the most, the most, the, the, the big one is freedom. That is up there. So that is, that is the, the, the pinnacle, is the freedom. Worst, worst part of, of the acceptance. People accepting you because you get those that come and, and try and talk to you because uh, they're interested and they think it's fantastic. But you also get those that walk past and have to have a jibe. Have to have a jibe. Why? Just leave us alone. As it stands at the minute, I, anybody that is talking to me um, in respect of looking for a house, looking for a flat. I am actually telling them, don't get a van or something and just get out there and, and live for a while before you jump back into the ball and chain of a property. Anybody that is sat there on the sofa or, or wherever thinking, oh, shall I, shall I, just do it. Just do it. The freedom of going 
There you go with the keys and ringing up the companies and cancelling the direct debits of all those bills and all that crap. Coach, bus, yeah, minibus, whatever. If, if you can live in it, strip it out, build it. Definitely, come join us. <laughs> Yeah, the way the crisis and everything's going at the moment uh, and with the way things are costing, people are struggling to afford to run their homes. I have got everything in here that I need to survive. I don't need anything else. You know, I, yeah, I've got a little Amazon Fire that I use for a TV. Pete next door has got a PlayStation and a, and a flat screen. So we're all different. I don't need that, you know, I mean, there's no TV or anything in here because I don't need it. This, this, is, this is my TV, you know. When I first started, um, I did find it lonely. And it opens your eyes and it makes you get used to your own company very, very quickly. So yeah, sometimes it does get quite head-bashingly lonely, but she, uh, she keeps me on my toes. And that's why I ended up creating uh, the Facebook group because I thought I can't be the only van lifer out there that's here struggling uh, mentally, you know, and, and everything. And that's what I did, say I created the Facebook group. It's helped me massively. Um, it's made me start socialising because with this lifestyle, you get to pick and choose. So you've got wheels. Um, so if you want to be social, you go, and, you go and park up somewhere where you want to be social. If you want time out, you go and park somewhere where you want time out. I had my first meet and from that I'm now doing a meet every month in a different area because it, the, it, I got such a good feedback. As for my Facebook group, um, it is purely for people that don't live in bricks and mortar. You can be in a car, you can be homeless, you could be in a tent, a caravan, coach or whatever and are basically struggling mentally, they've got trauma um, issues, they've got addiction issues. Uh, anybody wishing to escape from domestic violent relationships or anything like that, that's what I created the group for. Very, very personal group. My moderators and my admin team have been really carefully picked. Um, we've all been through, uh, you know, or experienced what all the rest of these people have. Um, for myself, I'm highly qualified. I'm trained mental, with mental health, substance abuse, suicide awareness um, and things like that. So. Yeah, if, if anybody's watching and uh, needs support and is, is doing this kind of lifestyle, feel free to drop on board. Uh, it's Van Lifer's Safe Space UK. Thank you ever so much for, for coming out and meeting me today. Um, and thank you ever so much, everybody, for watching. If you want to follow my socials, uh, my personal social is inkfreak underscore 78. And the Facebook group is Van Lifer's Safe Space UK. Thank you. Alright guys, thanks for tuning in to another video there and thanks to Vicky for telling us her story. Make sure to check her out on Instagram, the link will be down below. And if you did like the video, give it a thumbs up because it does help us and let us know in the comments what you thought. See you in the next one.